right, let's uh, move the capture down here a little bit more. All right, let's get started with this tutorial. This is to show not how to create this entire image, which I did uh, yesterday while waiting at a coffee shop for my wife to do some uh, Christmas shopping. Um, what I did is want to, sh what I do want to do is show you how to do that blue sky, that gradient sky. It's not actually done with the gradient, but uh, I will show a couple of different ways to do a sky that goes from dark blue to lighter blues to white hazy and perhaps sort of a darkish uh, horizon font at the bottom there. So let's, let's see how we do that. Uh, one of the first ways to do it is perhaps just to paint it, right? Here's my image and I'd like to have darker colors, darker blues at the top. So I'll pick a, a blue with the left button and what I'll do is I'll right click on my uh, brush tool either here or from the menu and I, I look for a brush that has a fairly large cover. There is actually one in the oils collection, the large, uh, where is it, cover, there, yeah, large cover. Click that and what you'll see is that it has random positions. As you're dragging, it, it randomizes the position a little bit so it's, it's not very precise and contained. It goes a little bit all over the place. And that's actually a good starting point because then we don't need to spend too much time going back and forth left and right as we draw this or paint it. One thing I'll do is I'll go to the settings and see if I can even further increase the maximum randomized position there. Let's do that. So it's going even a little bit farther. Right, And so what I'll do is I'll go a little bit bluish here and then I'll choose a different color. And you know, when you think about a gradient, you typically have maybe three or four gradient colors in mind. So you have something like uh, more of a cyan or lighter color and then perhaps a horizon color towards the bottom. And then perhaps again, some other color way below the horizon, something like this. Now, uh, this might be too much of a contrast and you can see sort of a structure there. So one thing you might do also is reduce the opacity. See right up here, you can set the opacity. And uh, if you set the opacity to much lighter, it's not going to have that much of an impact right away. If you go back to one of the bluish tints in between the ones already chosen, you can do a couple of splotches in between there. Right, so that's one way to do that and it's nice because it also gives a little bit of structure. You might get some hints of clouds and some other hazy patterns, but you might still want to blur it a little bit. So the next step you could do is to go to the filter menu and in the filter menu you see blur and uh, any one of those that um, might be useful is something like the Gaussian blur. Let's do that and just blur it a little bit more. Right. Or another one that might be also useful is, in fact, sort of a motion blur. Uh, if you want to also introduce sort of a strike, uh, a striping or, or, or some, let's see, where is it here? Something like this. If you want to introduce some, some horizontal uh, or maybe even vertical, you know, like polar lights or something like that. So as you move this thing around, you click and drag this and then move around, you get sort of an additional little bit of... <coughs> uh, um, side effect that looks like some uh, layering or strata. So I think that's a really good way to create something like a gradient color. Now there are other ways and th those actually use the actual gradients uh, that the program offers. So let's take a look at those. Now th in this tutorial I will not show how to define the gradient. That's a different topic, right? It, there's two parts. One is to define the gradient, like what colors is it going through from blue to light to brown in the end. That's defining the gradient and then you want to apply it. That's the second step. And so I will focus here now on just how to define, how to, how to, excuse me, how to uh, apply the gradient. Assuming you either have already created your own or you uh, are going to use one of the preset gradients. So there's a couple of different tools that apply the gradient for, that's usable for a sky. Even if you have something there and you want to just draw over it and have it, you know, start from scratch again, one way to do that is you see where this rainbow icon is. This is the fifth one down. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Right now, if you have the window in the layout uh, two column toolbar, it'll be this one, the third one down on the left side. Right. If you click on that, or rather, if you right click on that, you will see a couple of different tools. One of them is a linear gradient tool, and that's the one I'm talking about. Right. So the linear gradient tool. Let's say I'm going from about here and draw down, you see the black to white with the gray, that's the default gradient. Let go, and that's it. You can go sideways in a diagonal. Okay, so that's nice too, because if you want to show something like a scene that's in orbit, um, 
you can you can have sort of the, the mother earth down here on the right lower right and the the dark universe uh, space in the upper left but we don't want these colors black to white let's say we have a different gradient so you'll probably usually when you have gradients available for whatever tool you select like the fill tool the rectangle fill tool the oval fill tool most of these will have uh, an option to show the gradients so it's just a matter of finding it here but that's not the only option you need to look for you need to also look for fill settings in some cases, right? So for instance, in that tool that I was using here, the linear gradient tool, that one doesn't need the fill settings. That one just needs the gradient. What gradient do you want to use? So we see it here. And that's one place where you can grab or have a look at the available gradients. And uh, we'll use one of those here. Let's use this one here. Maybe the one that goes from blue to white, right? Through those different sky colors. And so we go from the top. To the bottom and you notice that <coughs> if, if if you don't go absolutely at the very top but a little bit on the inside and you go sideways it, it beyond that it's uh it is that last color or the first color of the gradient it fills it and then it applies the gradient and then it stops and fills the rest with the the final color so if you if you want to actually have uh, not only if you only want a portion of that gradient instead of drawing this on the inside what you could do is start on the outside so it's not going actually all the way to the darkest blue and you might also leave it alone down here and have some of it in, in white so a couple of different ways to use that uh, here really you're in control in which direction you're drawing it with the linear gradient tool all right so that's one way another way if you start from nothing um, let's say you you want to just fill it with the gradient so you could go with the paint bucket here uh, the the fill tool and there again you have a gradient and you can choose an existing gradient now when you do that it's not doing it because it's it's applying right now by default a plain fill with the current color you see here the primary color which I had last set to light blue when I was painting with it so what this does is that it requires not just a gradient okay that's one thing is to choose the gradient or to define it if you use the gradient editor down here or if you use the sweep editor over here either one of those allow you to define the gradient and modify it but we are going to focus on how to actually make it apply to that fill option when we use the fill tool how do we actually force it to use that gradient okay like I said it's one thing to define the gradient and it's a different thing to actually make it uh, come to effect you know make it uh, uh, or, or use it during a fill operation or a rectangle fill or oval fill so the thing for that is the fill settings and in the fill settings you'll see two categories at the top here you see one called pattern fill and then in the middle band you'll see a category called gradient fill obviously that's the one we need to focus on and the one that's categorized or the ones that selected by default is the plain color Right, there is a couple of other options here for opacity and uh, choosing predefined gradients. So you can click here too. So that's cool. And you can see the gradient here. And when you click on that, you actually go right into the gradient sweep editor where you can define your own and modify the existing one. That's a good way to start from a preset. But what we'll do now is say, well, how do we make it actually use that gradient? It's as simple as this. You need to just choose one of those gradient modes that actually uses it right the default is a plain color fill if you didn't use that but you used a pattern fill well we don't have a pattern selected right now so none of these will actually be happy with that choice we would have to first load or choose a, a pattern like the brick texture there and now at that point we can go to pattern fill all right so that's the mode for the fill operation and all we got to do now is go fill it and it will fill it with that pattern Right. But we're not talking about pattern fills, we're interested in gradients. All right, so let's start with empty and uh, erasing it to white or black, whatever, plain color. And select not the plain color, because that does just a fill at the current plain color with the left button. Or the secondary color, if you click with the right button, right? That's the white on the secondary color. All right, so what we want to do now is to apply the gradient. And there is a couple of different modes to choose from here. There's the the gradient horizontal, the gradient vertical, circular, that one needs a second operation as you click, we'll see that, and then there's a few others. For what we're trying to do here with the, the sky colors going from top to the down, top to the bottom, we need to obviously use this one, the gradient vertical. And when you click here now, it's going to apply that gradient that we have currently selected, 
and just uh, make it go there. Now, if you do that again, it's going to show these bands, and that's because it's filling from what it currently has. And what it does is it's not going to let it fill. If I erase, I can. But if I fill in here, it's going to immediately see different colors and stop. That's how the fill tool works, is that it's looking for neighboring pixels. And as long as they are the same or close enough, it will keep filling and expanding. Well, close enough doesn't do it here. We need to ch set the tolerance so that it's close enough by a margin of like 30. And it will go a little bit outside of that. Right? So there you can do some more fills. Um, but obviously for a sky, you erase, you click once, and that's that. All right, so that's the uh, gradient fill, and the same thing really applies with gradient uh, or rectangle fill. If you use the rectangle tool, by default, if you didn't open this fill settings, uh, the, the rectangle fill will use the plain color. So if you happen to have a reddish or let's say a yellow, let's dark, get a dark yellow as the primary color, you could do a fill, a rectangle, a uh, filled rectangle in yellow. You could have a, a pink on the right, button here with the secondary color and you draw and you get a secondary color left button right button and that's not the gradient so again if you want that to be filled with the gradient you got to choose which gradient mode on the fill operation here so let's do gradient horizontal now you have that and really the right button left button doesn't make a difference in this case because it's all using the gradient right if you do the vertical gradient therefore we can go like this all right so that's another way that you can use that let's go erase and that's another way that you can use that to do a gradient fill you can go from about here to the bottom or if you start on the outside of the image and you know if it's too big well you got to do is just zoom out right that's with the control shift and the right button drag or you can fit it here and then you can bring it to 100 percent or or use the zoom to make it smaller, I like the shortcuts. Control and Shift key on the, my left hand, and then with the right button, I zoom out. And so that way, I can set my rectangle fill exactly where I want, including on the outside of the image. Drag across and get it there. All right, so it's really, the trick is to set the gradient fill. And that's about it. Same thing with some other tools that use um, the, the fill, to, uh, fill mode. Uh, there's the, rect the oval. Right, the oval fill, you can do the same thing there, right? And, and then also, like I mentioned, the fill, the fill bucket there. And uh, of course, the fill bucket you'll use sometimes with some other combinations. Let's say you have a gradient, uh, or a selection, right? Maybe the, the lasso uh, to select a region. And that's going to simply prevent doing some drawing operations or changes, changing the pixels in this area, right? Preventing, if you paint, but also preventing if you fill. So if I, if I go and use the fill bucket and it's currently in gradient fill mode, it's going to apply the gradient only inside this region. All right, and that's that for this quick tutorial on how to actually use the gradient, let alone define it. So defining it is one thing, using it means you need to actually tell the fill mode or set the fill mode to gradient fill. And then that way it's all up to, well, what exactly do the colors go through? What is the the gradient uh, that you have defined. And that's a different topic. Maybe we can look at that uh, again in a different tutorial. There are a couple of tutorials already on that. And uh, I hope that all together, this is going to be useful for beautiful skies. And let's have a last look at this final image here, just to enjoy this view. All right, thanks for watching.